Chapter 11, Part 3, Change in Estimate, Error Correction, and Add-ons for Tangible Assets. Now, Issues that Affect Depreciation. Change in Service Life or Salvage Value or Additions. This is considered a change in estimate and is treated prospectively. That means you don't have to go back and change the financials. You would determine the net book value to the point of the change, and that amount less salvage value is the new depreciable base. A disclosure note should describe the effects of a change in estimate for the current period on net income and related per share amounts. So now let's take a look at an example with an add-on and a change in life. All right, we had a building that we started construction on and we completed in January of 1991, so we're assuming January 1st. It was estimated that the building will have a useful life of 40 years and a salvage value of 60000 at the end of that time. Early in 2001, an addition to the building was completed at a cost of 500000 and at that time it was estimated that the remaining life of the building would be, as originally estimated, an additional 30 years, and that the addition would have a life of 30 years and a salvage value of 20. In 2019, it's determined that the probable life of the building and the addition will extend, be expended to the year 2050 or 20 years beyond the original estimate. So first we get our important information. When we bought it, its estimated life, its salvage value. Again, we do that for the addition. And now we can take a look at the problem. So, information needed, total cost, service life, salvage value, date ready for use, annual depreciation, that's what we'd calculate. And now what we're going to do is compute depreciation expense up to the time of the change. So, the building depreciation would have been 48500 and uh, the addition is going to be 16000 So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to prepare our entry. But we don't need one because this is a change in estimate. So we don't have to go back and change anything. Now we're going, because we've changed the life, we're going to have to first come up with how much have we depreciated it so far, less the salvage value, divided by the remaining years, which were 40 plus 20 minus the 28 that have already gone by, which means we have 32 years left, divided into the 582, tells us our annual depreciation is going to be 18,188. Now for the addition, 18 years have gone by. We then divide the net book value by the 20, I mean subtract out the salvage value, times the 32 years, and now we have our annual depreciation for each one. So that's how you would do that. Again, you stop at a point in time, you recalculate the um, net book value, subtract out the depreciable base if it's changed, and, that the, and then you use the remaining years. Remember, it's remaining years. Gives you a new rate. So now let's take a look at what happens when you have errors. It occurs If it occurs in the current year, only the current year is affected. If it is a prior year correction, it is treated retroactively. That means you have to go back and restate any financials where you're doing comparisons. In most cases, it's three years on financial statements. And adjust beginning retained earnings. So let's take a look at examples for both of those. So here we have an example where it happened in the current year. So you purchased a truck for 18000 on January 1st of 2015 with no salvage value, and then you sold it on January 1st for 3500 and this is the journal entry they made, cash truck. Now we all know that's not right because you have to take the accumulated depreciation off the books and you have to take the truck off the books based on what you paid for it. So what should it have looked like at the time of the sale? It should have been, first you would calculate the depreciation up to that point in time, 
So you would book the cash, take the old equipment off the books, and then we would have had a loss on sale. So now how are we going to correct that? There's actually two ways. First, what we can do is reverse out the old journal entry and then book the correct one. This probably gives you the best trail. The other thing you can do is just adjust the difference. Now, I would say you should do the first one because then you're leaving yourself a trail. Because believe me, later on you're not going to remember why or what you did. Now, what happens if we have an error that is from a prior year? So in 2021, it was discovered that equipment purchased on January 1st, 2018 for 200000 with a five-year life and no residual value was debited to an expense account. What is the effect of this error on net income and retained earnings through 2020? First thing you're going to do is look at what you actually did and now you can compare it to what you should have done. So what we're saying is that what we should have on the books is accumulated depreciation of 120000 So based on this, over the three-year period depreciation expense was understated by 120000 and other expenses were overstated by 200000 so what is our correction going to look like? Okay, our correction entry would be equipment 200,000, accumulated depreciation 120,000, and retained earnings 80,000. That would be adjustment to beginning retained earnings. You would have to restate your prior year financials and you would have to have footnote disclosure. And that concludes part three.